What's going on guys? It's GBP baby. Welcome back to another video. I hope everybody's doing well and apologies for the lack of video yesterday. The hotel I was staying at, the Wi-Fi was really bad. But nonetheless, it looks like Price is doing just as we expected, so to speak. So if you've been following me this week, you'll know that I called us trading up into this rejection block and I also called us wanting to see a reversal. Now today was Thursday and you can see we got a Thursday reversal, very typical. We didn't quite get the reversal we wanted on CPI as I expected, but nonetheless it delivered on the Thursday. So it's nice to see that it's still in line with our bias of wanting to see a potential down close week. And looking at how aggressively low, like look how aggressive this candle is. This is all supportive of what we wanted to see, especially the fact that we're about to close below this low by the looks of things. So yeah, it's looking quite nice for the rest of the week as in moving, well, moving just into Friday. Another thing I want to draw your attention to is look at the high of this candle you'll see it came up to the 50% level of the rejection block again if you haven't watched this week's videos go watch them and you'll know I was talking about these levels and saying how I'm expecting price to want to turn around within this rejection block and voila it did so quite nicely um, another thing volume again volumes fail pretty much failed to trade into there again showing very heavy heavy bearishness which is why you know it's all supportive of our bias of wanting to see low prices so no complaints there um, what I am going to do is we are going to drop down to the lower time frame, take a closer look. I'm going to get rid of a few levels right now. And on the daily, again, I still have my eyes set down here. I doubt Friday is going to be able to reach there, especially after seeing all this movement on Thursday. But nonetheless, I do want to see if we can trade down in towards this week, into the in towards this wick, where specifically you guessed it, 50% level. So I'm looking for this as a potential target tomorrow. So let's get that delineated like so. And then to help us now in terms of framing price, we can also look at an inversion fair value gap. So this is a fair value gap right here. This is a bullish fair value gap. And now that we're closed below, it's going to be a bearish fair value gap. So let's get that delineated as a bear, daily bearish inversion fair value gap. Daily bearish IFVG. And now we know that if price does manage to retrace back inside of here, we expect it to provide resistance to help with what? Help it send price lower towards our south side targets. Now we have south side below Monday's low. It, because it's a, since it's a daily low, it is very significant. So I'm going to be looking at this low to get traded through. And like I said, it'll be nice to see if we can get down here. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was only the 25% level that we managed to reach. And as we drop down to the lower time frames, I'll be looking around these levels to then try and identify what specific um, PDRA, whether it's some kind of lows or some kind of um, uh, imbalance to get filled. So yeah, very beautiful delivery today. It's unfortunate that I wasn't able to record yesterday. Um, but nonetheless, well, post yesterday, but nonetheless, let's drop down to the four hour and take a better look. So again, beautiful delivery on Thursday, pure downwards price action, absolutely crazy. We do have a breaker. We have a high, we have a low, we have a higher high. And now that we've traded below this low, this last down close candle acts as a breaker. In fact, this is the last down close candle technically. And what you'll find is that that just, that just happens to be lined up perfectly with inside the daily inversion for our value gap. So again, even more reason as to why we should expect bearishness. Now, I'm not expecting much retracement at all. I would like to think that price can continue to keep pushing, pushing on lower. There is an implied fair value gap right here between this op between this close, sorry, and this uh, that close and that low. So let's get that marked out and we'll make that blue. And it'll be nice to see if price can trade down into that. So let's just move that to the front. But yeah, you can see how it's a very nice week in general because Thursday reversals like this very classic and very easy to get in on setups the only thing that threw me off obviously well through i can imagine threw a lot of people off was this pullback right here but again if you've been watching my videos this week you'll know i was still anticipating us to want to reach up into that um rejection block level actually no that's a lie my bad i called cpi's trade lower we didn't do that cpi trade higher but the rejection block which i originally called did manage to hold itself and send price lower eventually so yeah bit of a sticky week but there's only so much you can do Nonetheless, I'm looking for this fair value gap to get traded to. Let's now drop down to the one hour. Again, absolutely crazy delivery. Last down close candle before the up move. Let's get that delineated just because if price does manage to retrace back into that, I'd be looking for short and opportunities at that point with the expectation for price to be able to um, trade on lower and into our south side targets and our implied fair value gap below here. So yeah, there's, let's go to the 15 minute. We'll take a closer look really not much going on it does look like we're going to trade right into the uh asia session trading on lower if we if we reach into the south side liquidity uh like in asia or even during london then i'd expect a retracement in new york tomorrow so let me say that again if we manage to take out these lows in asia or in london then i'd like this level right here 
I'd expect us to be able to retrace back out of that and start to pull back into our range. I'm not really anticipating us to necessarily get all the way down into these lows um, tomorrow. However, if we don't trade into this low and we do find ourselves retracing earlier, then and only then would I think, you know, we may want to push on deeper. So it really does all depend. Um, but it does seem like price is heavily bearish right now. And, and like I said, this is an implied fair value gap. Now, the thing about implied fair value gaps is that they're not as they're not as strong as normal fair value gaps because while well, they're implied like although it's there it's not clear so in terms of their sensitivity it's not the same as say a clear fair value gap like that so we do need to take that into account but nonetheless this is where i'm aiming for and then once we're in there are we waiting to see okay how bearish are we does price want to push on lower or do, you, do we reckon we can get some kind of pullback that can help us with that another thing that we can use for our confluence as well now that we're clearly on the south side of the curve you know we've even traded to the breaker high low higher high broken lower if we look at this low as soon as that candle as soon as we traded below this low this is a selling opportunity this is a selling opportunity this is a selling opportunity south 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 all of this was opportunity to go short with the expectation to run out that wednesday low but my point is now that we're below this low and we're clearly on the south side of the curve what i was about to say so there's a consolidation here meaning that that's going to help us act as resistance but also this is the opening price the top of this can the cup the top of this box is the opening price for wednesday the fact that we're below that is even more reason as why we should continue to see resistance because we're on the other side of it and that's and it's little things like that which enable us to like think about things like you know premium and discount and we're clearly looking for the discount here is sunday's opening price right here and you can see how we're just kind of messing around that level now that we're below it again i'm expecting a lot of resistance at this level as in yes we may wick up above it a few times but generally speaking i don't really expect or want to see us retrace deeply into it ideally we don't even reach back up into here i'd like to think that price can be quite heavily bearish and just run on lower so i hope that all makes sense um again very interesting day today and again it's very nice to see a daily rejection block doing its job rejection blocks are one of those uh pd arrays which i've never fully understood so to speak as in they're very difficult to grasp on understanding but this is a perfect a perfect example of how a rejection block uh, behaves when you get it right and you know what you're looking for but um yeah cpi obviously threw us off a little bit and i can imagine how many people went long here put their stops below here and voila look we're attacking those and we can only imagine that they're going to start attacking the rest of them so yeah that's going to be everything on dollar i hope that will make sense so if we're expecting lower dollar tomorrow what does that mean we want to see higher pound uh, when you look at that, buy side liquidity has been ran. Now, pound, again, if you've been watching my videos this week, I was expecting us to find support at this level. We traded through it right down to the 50% daily fair value gap. And then you can see we're using that same level, which I called as support now. So it's in terms of accuracy, it's not there at all on pound, to be honest, this week. Well, wow. oh, since the CPI. So what I'm going to do just to make things a little bit cleaner for us, let's just clear everything and start thinking about where we want to see price draw to. So we have a clear breaker now, low, high, lower, low. So let's get that high marked out. Why? It will be very sensitive to price if we are to return back to it. And then where can we aim for? Well, we look for daily highs and lows, don't we, to, as buy side and sell side targets. So this is a nice buy side target. This is a nice um, buying opportunity if price manages to retrace back into that. And then because we're on the because we're on the buy side of the curve, we we don't want to look at bearish order blocks. We want to look at you know premium PD arrays like such as rejection block levels like here. I want to see if price can get up into there if it's going to be very expansive. But first, ideally, I want to see can we get into this buy side liquidity pool right there. Let's drop down to the four hour. Take a closer look. Beautiful price action here. Low, high, low, low. What's this last up so last up close candle? That's what we call a breaker. Again, if we manage to retrace down there, which I doubt we will. Why? Because I I can see we you can see we are aggressively bullish right now. Um, then we'd be looking for potential long in opportunities. Another thing we can look at is an implied fair value gap where between this low and this high, let's drag that right through and you'll see we're just three minutes away from closing above it. So that means when price retraces back inside of it, what do we expect? Support. So let's let's actually split this fair implied fair value gap into quarters and that will help us when we drop down to the even lower time frames, look for potential setups because when price trades down into these levels, we can start thinking about potential long in opportunities uh, or tra yeah, trading options. Trading options. <laughs> trading options. If you get that, you're a real one. So now I've got the 25% level, I've got the 50% level. Again, 50% seems a little bit of a stretch. Like I don't want to see price trade down in all the way back into there. 
um, this 20 this 25 percent level would be more ideal and then i'll be looking for potential like i said potential longs to run into the buy side target up here and there's a clear fair value gap up here as well to get filled so let's get that marked out as a nice premium pdra for us again with it being friday that there is high impact news tomorrow but um price doesn't need to get all the way up there it could if it doesn't go up to there if it doesn't manage to reach a buy side liquidity it will at least it should at least reach a 50% level off this wick. So let's get that delineated at first because how we can trade this is let's say we do, let's say everything I'm saying is completely correct. If we went long here and price did manage to trade up into here, then I could take off some of my position. And then if price just fails to get up there, then we just close the rest of the position at the end of the day, done and then we're profitable. And let's say we don't even get down, let's say we don't even get down to the 25% level and we only get down to the, not even the quarter level, we simply just split it again. Now I've never actually done this, but it's very much possible. But we'll know when we drop down to the lower time frames. That's now what's half of twenty five guys? Twelve point five. This is now the twelve point five percent level. So let's take a look at these as we drop down to the one hour. What can we find? Not really much information here. Clear fair value gap, so I want to see that get filled in general. Remember we're on the buy side of the curve, so we're hunting for some kind of buy side liquidity um let's go to the 15 minute yeah not really much this now now look this 12.5 percent level happens to line up with the 50 percent level off this fair va inversion fair value gap because if we now mark out the 50 percent level off that you see how that lines up perfectly so now i'm going to be watching this very closely to see if we find support there if we do again beautiful opportunity for, for potential longs and then i'll be looking to see if we can reach up into our very high premium all of this consolidation, we should be able to trade through it, assuming we're bullish. And I'd like to think it can do it off the back of news. Any lower than the any lower than that 25 this level. So let's get rid of this. I don't even want to see price go down there, ideally. But any lower than this 25% level tomorrow, and I'll be a little bit more cautious, to be honest. Um Yeah, a little bit more cautious. Just because I don't believe price needs to retrace that deeply let's now drop down to let's drop down to the let's go back to dollar sorry just to take a closer look yeah i don't really ideally i don't want to see pound reach down back deep into here if it manages to get down there i don't really want to be trading it it'll be too weak for me i'd like to think that it can continue rallying it's way higher into you know the buy side target that it seems to be attacking so yeah that's going to be everything on pound i hope that all makes sense um nothing too crazy Again, we look for consolidations as targets. This is a consolidation right there. What I usually do is I make my consolidations gray. And then we want to see price trade above the consolidation. So let's, like, I want to see it attack that consolidation. And I'd like this gap right here as well on the one hour. If that gets left open, that is even more support as to why we'd want to continue to see higher prices. But, but yeah, obviously we'll have to wait and see. So that's going to be everything on pound for now. Let's now head on to Euro USD to finish. Oh, excuse me. We'll start on the daily here as well. Wow. Euro's doing absolutely fine, isn't she? So, wow. Would you look at that, guys? So this is a bullish order block, which I did speak about earlier this week. Again, if you haven't watched this week's video, go check them out. Came down. Look at the close on that and look at the open on it we open and close at the bullish order block and look at the reaction off of it. So this is what we call a propulsion block. Why? Because because in the on the higher time frame we're trading on higher. This is our target on the long term, right? And I might talk more about this on Sunday or in a separate video in general. In general, but what I'm saying is that because this is on the inter this is internal, this is what we call a propulsion block and we expect it to react like this and wow, absolutely gorgeous. Um yeah so again if we're expecting higher prices what do we want to target we want to target daily highs and daily lows so we've got some buy side liquidity up here and if it does want to be overzealous which is completely fine with me i'm looking to reach into this rejection block level we also have a nice inversion fair value gap what should it do it should provide support it should provide support for price assuming we get down there we might not even return back into this uh inversion fair value gap it might be too uh, much of a discount for us let's go to the four hour yeah craziness and you can see we've just tapped in well we're just about to tap into this bearish order block yes it's going to give us a little reaction but we don't expect to go short here now and trade on lower why we have a higher time frame bias we want to see higher prices correct so any kind of reaction we do get away from it we assume is a suspect rally a suspect rally you ever played have you ever played um among us 
and there's a suspect. You suspect someone is trying to kill you, right? And you go and vote. If we start pulling back all of a sudden in these kind of environments after we've just done this away from bullish order block on the higher time frame, if we start pulling back, that's suspect. That's sus that's suspect. That's suspect. And that's why we call it a suspect. Um, well, it would be a suspect fall in this case if it was other side. So if we were trading lower, it would be a suspect rally. This would be a suspect, what do you call it? The opposite of rally. Anyway, my point being, let's drop down to the one hour, see what we can find. Again, not much help over here, really. There is a little bit of an inversion fair value gap going on. We've got one here, but that's too much of a premium. Well, we've just tapped into that. And then there's one here. So we can use these levels that I'm delineating right here because when price, like I said, retraces back into them and it's suspectful, then we should use them as potential uh, buying opportunities depending on the time of day and how close you are to news releases, etc. We do also have a breaker, low, high, low, low. So this is the thing about breakers and this is why they are difficult to use and why I find them difficult to use sometimes. Although I'm saying I don't want to see price come down here, it can do it. Now, me saying that it sounds like, well, it, the price can do anything, it could come down here. Yeah, technically it can, but I've just shown you and called to you this week, showing you, you know, where we're expecting reaction and look what happened. My point being is that the likelihood of it happening isn't very high. It can happen. And if it does, so be it. But I don't want to see it happen that deep. I don't want to see a retracement that deep. If it does do it, and I'm still confident in my trade, don't get me wrong, I'll still trade it, but my, my risk will probably drop significantly. So these are the things you got to take into account, guys. Um, but yeah, it's good to have them marked out just because if prices, if we do find price falling really aggressively and we're getting all worried and it's London session, it's like, oh no, it's turning around, it's turning around. We know, okay, if it's going to get through here, then it's probably going to come down to the breaker high. Or it's probably going to come down to the last, it's probably going to come down to the last up close candle at the most. Any lower than this, then I'm like, then I'm just fully out. Here, I might be in. Here, I'm like, uh, is it even worth it, you know? So that's how I'm like thinking about, thinking about price. But uh, all I'm saying is that if we're trading higher, down close candles should be providing support. And then up close candles should be providing resistance. Is that right? No. Let me show you that again. <laughs> if we're trading higher, down close candles should be providing constant support. So as soon as I start seeing down close candles being disrespected consistently, then I'm just like, what's going on? Like this ain't supportive so that's why i'm looking specifically in these areas and you can see how it lines up with certain points of consolidation because it's reaccumulation for you know the buy side of the market i'm looking to see how we react off it and if we can you know eventually get above our original consolidation to run the buy stops so yeah i hope you found this insightful guys very interesting price action i'm looking forward to tomorrow today's been absolutely incredible um don't forget to drop a like drop a comment smash subscribe join the mailing list join the discord and yeah, I'll catch you guys on Sunday. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.